there is that which is able to create a supply for your every need. The Word of God and the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, who helps us represent God's fullness on earth. In true intimacy, partnership, and fellowship with Him. Be a part of this and join us as the servant of God, Apostle Joshua Selman, brings to you the Word of God with simplicity and power. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and let's bless the name of the Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. Tonight we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Father, we leave our hands in worship as we pray. You are great, for you are great. You're the miracle, so great. There is no oh, there is no one like you. Wave your hands and tell him there is no one. There is no one. Hey, hey. You are great. You do miracles. So great. There is no one like you. There is no one. There is no Your hands and express your gratitude to the King of Kings. Lord, I thank you. His presence is here. Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving us the grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and thank Him for wisdom. Thank you for grace. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank Him as a family of faith for doing what only God can do. Lord, we thank You. Thank You for the anointing. Thank You for the miracles. Come on, express your thanks and gratitude. You escape the edge of the sword. You escape the wickedness of men. He said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit Feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Can we just take that part again? Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation 
where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Is pleased to That's our desire. Oh Lord, I want, oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Pray for a few minutes in the spirit, will you? Sata pakata baliaraba, manka baba baka prosaka teka teka lele baka tafra kata baliaraba busha, manka baka prosika te, sapa baliaraba kampre seka teka lele busha, kampre papa tika ta, kapra se bande cross kapa baliaraba basheka pos. We desire to know your glory. Sata baliaraba seka teka baliaraba, ne baliaraba busha, kampre taka baliaraba busha, seka baliaraba busha, prosa Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege. How many of you know it's always a privilege? It's always a privilege to worship and to bless His name. That's why we don't take it for granted. We never allow ourselves to be too familiar with His presence. Because in His presence, that's where we receive the miracles, the signs, the wonders. The transformations that only Him can bring. I don't know why you're here tonight. But I need you to know that the Lord is here to bless you. And I believe. I am convinced. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. Not be mixed with faith. Lord I believe you. You cannot be joking with me. I believe you. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe. Lift your hands and make this Lord, commitment. Say, Lord, you're too serious to be playing. When you say you will bless me, you mean it. When you say I'm the head, you mean it. I believe, Lord, I believe. When you say I'm anointed, you mean it. I believe. I believe. I believe. Yahweh. Yahweh. You are bigger, Lord. You are bigger than what people say. Yahweh. Sing it from your spirit. Yahweh. Yahweh. You are bigger, Lord. You are bigger than what people say. Yahweh. You are bigger than what people say. Yahweh. Yahweh. You You are better than what people say. say. Yahweh. 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 
Yahweh. We worship you. We worship you. We honor you. We worship you. Spirit, you're the only one who can bless, can change, who can heal, and so we bless you. My faith reaches out to you. Do you believe tonight? Oh yes, your word for me. Let your faith reach out tonight. My faith reaches out to you. Say, Maria, na na ma, kibra na 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 ma, le para ba sa ba na na ma. Focus on His ability. Your word. My faith is reaching out to you. Bible says there remains a rest for the people of God. It says the nation of Israel could not enter their rest because of unbelief. He said today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as it were in the days of the provocation of Israel. Say let us therefore labor to enter that rest. He said for he that is entered into his rest is ceased from his work. He that has entered into his rest ceased from his work. Oh, we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everybody good to see us. Walk around to ten people. Give them a big hug. Tell them it's been a while. Don't frown. Laugh. Smile. Hug your friends. Hug your enemies. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good to have you around. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I'm moving from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. I'm going from one level of grace to another. In the name of Jesus. My faith is rising. And the glory of the Lord is upon me. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The grace of God is at work in me. His anointing is alive in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I have authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The grace of God is at work in me. I am the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Give God a shout. Bible says, 
we having the spirit of faith as it is written I believe have I spoken say we believe and therefore we speak the operation of the spirit of faith is that you are convinced and then you declare Hebrews 11 verse 3 says through faith and that the world the systems were framed by the word of God hallelujah we celebrate the ministry of the word of God I don't know about you but I belong to that category of people Bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh they didn't say they are life to Christians they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh Hallelujah. Be seated. God bless you. Good to have everyone around. Please bring out your bios, your notebooks, and let's get into the word. Hallelujah. Is it possible to have some of those people standing just share these vacant seats? Please, ushers, protocol, help them. Some of these seats that are vacant, please pick them up. And let the people have the seats, alright? Some of them can come to the front. Hallelujah. Please let's let's not have vacant seats around. If there are vacant seats, just highlight the ushers. Even if it's for you and you'll be standing, please let the people sit down. Jesus told them if they don't sit down, there's no bread. Hallelujah. Don't feel bad, those of you standing, you are still you are sitting in the spirit. The Bible says so. Hallelujah. Praise God. What I want to teach tonight is very important and is very powerful. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, God is helping us to build, to train, please listen, to equip His people with the understanding of the Word of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are bringing everyone by the grace of God to a point where we know the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, let the wise man not glory in his wisdom and the strong man in his strength. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he knoweth me and understandeth me. Hallelujah. The pride of the Christian is in the knowledge of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, God is helping us to know him by his spirit. To understand the nature of God. The kingdom of God is divided into two. Number one is the nature of God. You understand the nature, the person, the character. Hallelujah. The end of that revelation is you conform to the image of the Son. Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He said, but we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, we are changed. Hallelujah. We are changed into that same image. And so the knowledge of the person of Jesus is enhanced through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And in the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of intimacy, we get to know who He is. Ejimi said something very powerful. He said it's not about receiving miracles and not knowing the person. It's not just good to know the word. You must know the author. Hallelujah. You can know about me by reading my books and listening to my messages, but you know me by interacting with me. Hallelujah. And when it comes to intimacy with the Holy Spirit, this is not a, it's not a conventional, it's not a, it's, a, it's not a collective thing. The Bible says, He, not them that dwell in the secret. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a revelation of God that you have in the place of intimacy. That's why we say koinonia is intimacy and partnership. Hallelujah. When you know the person of the Holy Spirit, you understand the nature and the person of God. Then you get to understand His principles. Hallelujah. His principles. The value system of heaven, the modus operandi uh, with which the territory of heaven 
functions by. So when you talk about the principles of God or the principles of Jesus Christ, it's his value system, his code of conduct, his way of doing things. Hallelujah. You never can call yourself transformed until you truly understand the value system of heaven, the laws of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. For in the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom, it will equip you to rule and reign as a king in this life. Let, let me tell you something. You can know the Lord. Are you listening to me? You can know the Lord. You can pray in tongues. You can do all of these things. You find yourself conforming to the image of the Christ life. But it takes the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Why will all of these things happen? Because I will give you the keys. Keys represent access. Hallelujah. I will give you the laws and the principles. How to understand and to navigate through my system. And this is what we teach all the time. It's not, you don't empower people just by teaching stories. You don't empower people when, when you go to class. The lecturer does not give you stories. He teaches you what? Principles. The knowledge of your principles is what you will use to answer your exam questions. Because it's not the same question they will ask you. But it will require the application of the same principle. Can I tell you something? There is nothing you will face in life that will not require the operation of kingdom principles. Are you listening to me? So, the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom will help you and guide you through life. There are so many believers that have no knowledge on the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I was, I was, I think I was teaching in a meeting and I said, many believers do not understand the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. That's why we use whatever key. Do you know that not every key opens every door? Every key cannot open your room, but it's a key. Is that correct? Now, when you begin to handle every key, because it comes from God does not mean it to open the door. You must know the right key that opens every door. And it is the understanding... He says, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to share with us something very powerful. Romans chapter 12. When a believer gets born again and filled with the Spirit of God, the Bible tells us that there is a translation, I always say this, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Hallelujah. Now, that initial experience, look up please, that initial experience at salvation does not affect your soul and your body necessarily. Are you listening to me? That transformation, that regeneration happens uh, from the realm of your spirit. But it takes the renewing of your mind. It takes changing values, philosophies, priorities. And this is what the Holy Spirit, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is not to make the person look anointed alone, but to bring the person to that point where you have been translated from one system, one value system, one code of operation, into another system. And the degree to which you yield to the Holy Spirit to align is the degree to which you will find yourself walking in consistency with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. So he's talking to brethren. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says, do not be conformed. In other words, there is a mindset. Please listen to me carefully. This is a very very 
very important message, especially at this time in Nigeria and in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we are not the same with they that are of the world. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? It's one thing to accept something. It's another thing to believe. To believe means to conceive as a reality in your spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible separates us. And it lets us know that we do not belong to the category of the world, the carnal minded, the natural men. God has exalted us to a realm where we operate by another law. We operate by different sets of rules. Hallelujah. And it's not enough to confess that you are a Christian. You must allow the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word to bring you to that position experientially. Otherwise, you will find yourself born again, but you will not be able to walk in the victory of Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? So this is very, very important. I'm talking tonight about A victorious mindset. Write it. A victorious mindset. Or the victorious mindset. Really. I found out something interesting in scripture. Please look up. As I began to search through scripture, I found out that there were certain things that made God angry. There were not many times in the Bible that God was angry even with his people but i found out that there were certain things in scripture that every time it occurred it made god angry i mean god was angry and he responded to it in a very in a very interesting way and so i found out that if we do not align ourselves we'll get god so angry with us all the time hallelujah the bible says do not be conformed what does that mean that means that there is pressure Attempting to bring your mindset. Listen, a mindset talks of um, your a sum total of your ideologies, a sum total of your philosophies, your value system, what makes up your belief system, what um, what informs your convictions about God, about men, about life. And can I tell you something? We come from different backgrounds. And as diverse as our backgrounds are, so are our mindsets. We have packed every kind of thing from different systems, different experiences. And when we all come into the kingdom, the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. What happens? You come as you are, but you don't remain as you are. Are you listening to me? The problem with the body of Christ is we want to come as we are and remain as we are. No, no. You come as you are and then the Holy Spirit engages you in the ministry of transformation. Hallelujah. Your work with the Spirit should bring a predictable result. I should be able to look at you after a season of walking with the word and with the spirit. You should look like something. And that portrait is the one we call Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. He said, let this mind, the word let there is permit. Permit this mindset. Jesus walked upon the earth. He had a mindset. Are you listening to me? Jesus had a mindset. He had, he, he had a way he behaved. The way he responded to people. The way he, when, when they, they believed that um, there would not be fish, he spoke as one with authority. They caught uh, a prostitute and brought to him and he responded. He seemed to operate uh, with a value system that was not known to the then Jewish nation. And they were very surprised. What kind of mind is this? How do you think? What is your thinking pattern like? Can I tell you something? Every successful man in life has a mindset. Whether in the secular or in the kingdom. And a healthy mindset is not part of the gift of the spirit. Are you listening to me? Oh no. The Bible says, get wisdom. Buy the truth. It puts a pie strat there. 
Hallelujah. You cannot receive a kingdom mindset as an impartation. No, why? Because there are already forces in your mind. The Bible calls them strongholds. The weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but mighty through God. Hallelujah. What do those weapons do? To the pulling down of strongholds. They exist in the realm of the mind. It's a casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. One of the biggest ministries of a believer is to align, not just to preach and go for evangelism, to align with the Holy Spirit such that He begins to work in you and produce in you a kind of mindset that only belongs to kingdom citizens. You are not just a kingdom citizen because you bear a Christian name. Even if your name is kingdom, it doesn't make you a kingdom citizen. Hallelujah. There is a mindset. And can I tell you something? Dr. Mike Mudok said something and I respect so much. He said the world has embraced the person of Jesus Christ, but we have rejected his principles. I mean the church. While the world has rejected the person of Jesus Christ, but they have embraced his principles. How true. Hallelujah. And so there is not just... It's not just enough for us to pray. We've had 21 days prayer and fasting. You can never rise above the level of your mindset. Are you listening to me? You can never. No. I will show you from scripture that the mindset of a man can limit God in his life. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Please listen to this message very carefully and let the Holy Spirit... Psalm 78. God began to walk with the nation of Israel. And he showed them mighty things in Egypt. Hallelujah. The ten plagues and he parted the Red Sea. He did a lot of things to prove to them that he was Lord. But they had a mindset. Do you realize that they had been in Egypt for 430 years? Listen. 430 years is enough for you to adopt a mindset because you were born there. Are you listening to me? Now, when the Lord called them, that's why he had to separate them from Egypt. When God calls a man, he takes you out of the environment that created that wrong mindset. And then he walks on you. Then he sends you back as a deliverer. That's what he did to Moses. Moses was born with a mindset. He took Moses out to the backside of the mountain for 40 years. Let me announce to you that God is not in a hurry. He can wait. Are you listening to me? For 40 years, he wanted to use Moses. But the mindset of Moses kept limiting God. Until he walked on Moses in a way and a manner that his mind could now release God. And then he said, alright, let's walk together. The exact same thing happened to Abraham. God had a blessing for Abraham in his spirit. And he wanted to communicate it. But the mindset of Abraham would not allow the Lord to bless him. And one day the Lord said, how do I open this guy's mindset? He said, Abraham, come out. Look at the stars. He said, count them. And Abraham began to count. And he could not count. He said, now, this is how I will bless you. Finally, Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. Hallelujah. Psalm 78. Verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law and forgot His works and His wonders that He had shown them. Marvelous things did He in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. And then you read down verse 17. And they sinned yet the more against Him by provoking the Most High. Interesting. This is the sin they committed. What was the sin? The Bible says they provoked the Most High in the wilderness. So God can be provoked. They provoked the Most High. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they tested God in their heart by asking according to their desire. Yea, they spoke against God. And they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? That's verse 19. He said, Can God 
and God furnished a table in the wilderness. Are you listening to me? After all of the things that the Lord did to them, God told them, I'm taking you into a land that flows with milk and honey. And those guys would not believe God. One moment they are up, and the next moment they are saying, Moses would have gone back to Egypt. You see, the mindset was still there. Can I tell you something? It took a day for them to cross the Red Sea. But it took more than 40 years for Egypt to leave their mind. The fact that you are born again and you have left the world system does not mean the mindset of the world has left you. It will take the operation of the Spirit of God. You know why I'm saying that? Because you have built your entire life and trust on those values. You grew up with them. They taught you those values in schools. Now God is saying you've got to drop those values. Hallelujah. You have grown up with your father talking to you all the time and say, Son... In this life, money doesn't grow on trees. No giving, don't give anybody anything. All I give you, keep it. It belongs to you. Then you begin to study the Bible and the Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than is me. Two kingdoms are fighting. There is a war that begins to fight in you. Your father is saying, Well, if you like, do what you want to do. And the word of God is saying, This is the principle. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, say, will a man rob God? He said, yes, ye have, wherein have we robbed you? He said, the whole nation of Israel, bring in your tithes that there may be meat in my house. He said, and prove me now here with say the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. All of these blessings... You see, but you have been built in a system. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, if that same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, but you've lived all your life on drugs. Nothing is wrong with drugs and medicine and all of that, but I'm telling you that there is a higher life. Are you listening to me? And now you have to start contending with those laws. You have grown up with a mindset and you live in a world that says, well, whatever, whatever will be, will be. Whatever will be, will be. If I die today, I die. If I'm sick today, I'm sick. Whatever will be, whatever life gives me. Then you begin to study God's word. And it says that this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. It said, thou, thou should be careful that you observe it. It said, then shall thy ways be prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Hmm. And then Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says It shall come to pass in that day If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord To do and observe all that I command thee this day He said that I will set you on high And all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you There are two kingdoms fighting The mindset that you got from your village Living with your grandmother, living with all kinds of things. Whenever the Lord begins to speak of blessings, you are not ready for those things because of a mindset. Do you realize how that Satan has crippled the church, the body of Christ, the nation of Nigeria by giving us a mindset that came from the African culture? Are you listening to me? There is a mindset that the African culture gave us. It's a mindset of servitude. We inherited it when, when the colonial masters came. After they finished with Nigeria, they left a mindset of servitude. And that mindset still follows even intelligent students on campus. Because the moment a student enters school, the next thing he's thinking of, he do, he's not thinking of productivity, he's not thinking of creativity, he's thinking of what? Servanthood. Let me just get somebody and let me be a secretary. It's a mindset. They limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God? And the Bible said that statement provoked God and God was angry. How dare you limit me? Hallelujah. So we are saying, Lord, bless me. Lord, make me this. I am the head and not the tail. Calm down. If you do not understand the principles of the kingdom, be sure that you are going to live a frustrated life. Are you getting blessed? The principles. Do you know something about God? The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of His throne. That's a dangerous statement. That means the fact that you are a Christian does not necessarily mean 
that you will just walk in victory like that. There are rules that you engage. And if you don't engage them, I tell you the truth, you will leave gray only to tell your stories to your children. This is what is happening in the nation of Nigeria. But if we are to be the victorious people, there is a mindset. Say after me, there is a mindset. I need to have. Say there is a mindset. And that mindset comes from the word of God. The Bible says do not be conformed. That means refuse it. If you don't refuse it, you will inherit it. That mindset is in the films you watch. That mindset is in the news you listen to every day. They are called mind control systems. They give you a false view about life. You finish watching a film and you are afraid about life. There's no audacity to walk in grace and power again. It's a mindset that inflicts fear. It's a mindset that inflicts defeat. It's a mindset that keeps you in servitude. And so you are always looking for someone to help you when you are the deliverer. That's the mindset that makes us to blame our parents. It's the mindset that makes Nigerians never to take responsibility over their lives. There is no nation in the world that runs away from responsibility like Nigerians. The government is not doing this. My father did this. They told my father to be serious. He wasn't serious. Okay, now that it has happened, what are you doing about it? My stupid father, I'm this and that. Keep insulting people. There is a mindset. And many of us are taking those mindsets. And we are laughing, we are saying, Hallelujah, I'm entering a blessed place. You are not. You are not. You are entering in the realm of the spirit. But it may never manifest in this realm. Hallelujah. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. What does it mean to have faith? It means that you lay your life upon the foundation of the integrity of God's word. Hmm. Hebrews 11. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it, this faith, the elders obtained report, a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The system. Hallelujah. We live in a culture where we are taught to respond to things in carnal ways. Hallelujah. Ah, Boko Haram. Where will this come and happen? Boko Haram. And people begin. You see, look at the panic that is around. You feel it in the air. Many believers, your faith has become stupidity. In your room, you laugh at yourself and say, man, is this God thing serious? I we are just fooling ourselves here. It's only because you have not said it in your mind. You have said, let's keep God aside though, and walk with common sense now. <laughs> now, don't laugh. It's a dangerous mindset. If it does not change, you'll never be victorious in life. Men who rule the world are men of conviction. Are you listening to me? If you get up today believing that this speaker is God, if you can convince people, you'll find followers that will follow you. This is the issue. Dr. Mark dead men rule the world the ideologies of dead men are the ones who are ruling the world and those who are alive are picking those mindsets and we are running with them tonight god wants to give us a mindset for victory are you listening to me there is a mindset jesus came from a city called nazareth let's start from there the bible makes us to understand that when nathaniel was told to come and see jesus he said can anything good come out of where can anything good come out of kano can anything good come out of zamfara can anything come out of your village that the map is not in this country but he said can anything good come out of nazareth when people speak like this they have a track record in other words they have seen nazarenes not become anything and he said can anything good that's the first mindset that you need to conquer many of us give a lot of excuses there are many of us today who lie and say me i'm from i'm from lagos then when there's a flood in lagos say no 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 i'm from Bielsa. what kind of life do you want to live you know why you are defining your life by where you are coming from not where you are going to can anything good come out of nazareth do you not realize that those who have changed the course of history 
came out out of nowhere. Men who were resilient in their convictions. Took responsibility over their destiny. Dared the word of God. The Bible talks, not the Bible, history. Tells us about Maria Woodward Eater. Men and women like Catherine Kuma. These were ordinary people. They dared to take the word of God. When they saw the word of God, they said, Lord, if this is what you are saying, I will change history with it. Kapatobakaya. And they refused. Their parents said, don't be ambitious. They said, no way. I know where I am going. Men of conviction. I do not see men of conviction in the church. We are men who our faith is shaky and slippery. And that tells us it's not founded upon the principles of God's word. When you truly believe the word, you can die believing it. The depth of your conviction is the degree to which you can manifest faith. If I die of sickness today, the last word that will come out of my mouth before I die is by his stripes, I am healed. The Bible says they limited God. Have you been limiting God? Every time God said he wants to bless you in your mind, you give God the person to use and bless you. My uncle. God, you must be talking about Uncle Sam. Strangers shall feed your flock. He said your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this thing? See, let me tell you something. I'm very serious tonight. Do you believe it? Don't just nod. This is a question God is asking because life will ask you and you must answer. Every single one born of a woman, if you must cross this button into greatness, life will ask you the depth of your conviction. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will build it in three days. Ah, I must be a man of conviction. Do you believe the word of God? Or you are just holding on to God and then putting your leg on something else and say, Lord, this journey we need to use wisdom. We need to do here and then hang on because you have a track record of failing people anytime. So I'm not ready to let this thing fall in an ocean. Look at what he told Peter. Peter said, If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, Peter, do you believe me this much? Come. Let me prove to you I'm the one. satire. You will have to step out of that boat and walk upon the waters. This is what makes champions. If it be thou, bid me come. And Thomas was saying, Peter, Peter, how many times did I call you? He said, well, Peter, I would like to record the history of how you died. You can go. And the Bible says, when Peter began to walk, see, every time you read about miracles in the Bible, realize that before the miracle happened, the the people were not laughing, the way you are laughing when you read that story. Every testimony you hear here, at that point, it was a moment of faith. Mindsets. Are you listening to me? The Bible tells us in the book of Numbers, remember I sent the post, it says they were how many, how many spies? Many of you don't know. Some are saying four. How can it be four? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many? Twelve. Twelve spies were sent. Now, God had already spoken. God gets annoyed when he speaks and we don't believe. This is what they call limitation. God is not insult. Let me tell you something. Um... If I tell you, if I tell you that we will organize the welfare to make cake for you, and later I see you sweating and praying and doubting, and say, hey, will this cake come? I look at you and say, what is the big deal? Did you not see people celebrate and enjoy cake here? This is exactly how God gets angry. When God speaks to you, he weighs his ability first. And then he looks at his ability and says, I'm able. Go ahead, trust me. But we have several believers that have mindsets that are not programmed for victory. And hear me friends, some of you are in final year, some of you are already working. There is the mindset that is going to bring destruction for many upon this land. This is why I am speaking to you. Many of you may feel this message is not important. But the Nigeria you used to know, Nigeria you... Are you listening to me? 
Many of you have been shielded by your parents and families. So you have not had the opportunity to see the reality of what I'm saying. Life will be waiting for you in front of Contagora Square. As soon as you are carrying your, you are dropping your graduation gown, you say, welcome. There is a system. But you must ride against it and say, no way. Hallelujah. Ten of them came. They said, Moses, were you stupid when you sent us? Go ever try this. It's even by God's grace that we came back. Are you playing? Those guys had six fingers, six toes. They were of the descendants of, 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 of the, they were the Anakites. We, we cannot lie. There was, there was honey and there was the, the fruit there. We, at least we were able to taste it. But Kai, forget about it. We're not getting there. Go and tell God that that promised land, he should carry it and change the location. And while they were speaking, God was listening. God was joining in the conversation. And God was not finding it funny. Are you listening to me? Oh, hallelujah. The name of one of the two is Joshua. Mm. The Bible says, the Joshua and Caleb came. They said, boy, let's go up at once. Why are we waiting? Look at two people. The same place. They said, let's go up. We are able to take these guys. We tasted the fruit. I mean, this fruit is, we need to get these guys out of the way. Joshua, how are you getting them? Let's go at once. Mm. At once. At once. That a student can look at his results and you can see probation. And while they are laughing at you, you laugh and say, the world changer is still there. Tears may be in my eyes. My lecturer insulted me. But there is a mindset. I refuse to conform. I refuse to call myself a failure. It's an abomination. It's not in the constitution of my kingdom. I refuse to bow. I refuse to give in. I'm walking in my high places. It's a mindset. There are many of us that are too weak. What kill you at once? When someone looks at you, maybe your lecturer or someone, and just says, Guy, you, you, don't, you look like a failure. For two weeks, you will be lean, you will be sick. They say, why? He says, somebody said so. Don't you realize that you need this kind of people on your path to success? Who else will testify? He make a table before me in the presence, not the absence. Listen, you must refuse to bow. This world is a wicked world. It will make you bow to things that are not consistent with the word of God. Anything, I refuse to say anything about my life that is not, I refuse it. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are, if there be any good report, if there be any virtue, think on these things. The Bible tells us what to think on. Are you listening to me? It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? How many of you have been thinking on lies? A lie is anything God did not say. Anything. Whether your government said it, a lie is anything God did not say. We have believed in a lie as a country. We have believed in a lie as individuals. We have believed in a lie Many ministries have believed in a lie. Many people have believed in a lie. Oh, it says, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, it tells you what? What have you been thinking on? Hallelujah. You carry your result of first semester 100 level and you are in 400 level. You are just looking at it. And you are just looking at it. And you are meditating. You are looking at it. And then maybe the person who printed out the result wrote something. He said, funny student, exclamation mark. And you look and you stand in the mirror. You ask someone, you say, sorry, am I funny? What, why are people saying this? Or somebody sees you and says, you said, Every time yellow trousers, or every time yellow trousers, and you go back and you are crying. Do you not see your future? Do you not see that it is better than your yesterday? You must refuse. See, not conforming means refusing. 
There is a level of stubbornness that will take you to your promised land. You must refuse. You can't bend into everything. Do you know how many people have talked me down in life? Oh, you don't want to imagine. But I'm standing and moving by the glory of God every day. Do you? Listen, I, I'm serious. You see here now and see Koinonia today. Do you know? Do you know how that we have had to be resilient walking by the word? Many of us do not believe the word enough. You say, oh Lord, this semester is going to be a good semester for me. Three weeks into the semester, your uncle didn't send the money he promised. And now you're in trouble. No Gary, no nothing. Your roommate says, you better come and join. Let's share Gary and keep this your stupidity. And then he says, it's true, Gary. And then, no, no, there's nothing wrong. Go and take the Gary. But say, Lord, I thank you. Because I'm doing this thing. My days are numbered. I know that the word of God is translating me. I live by these principles. Are you listening to me? You are sleeping and you sense any demonic challenge. You don't just get up and say, hey, where is Jake's? Jake's, oh, no, no. Stand up and say, I have been made to sit with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions. The problem is we shout with these things in church. And as we are stepping out, we drop it near our seats. And then we laugh, wow, church was great. Do you not realize that you are supposed to take this truth and go and apply it in your life? Hallelujah. They call and they say, I'm robbers, just robbed your house. And they injured people and they are crying. Many people just say, God, why? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You don't speak like that. Does it matter? Look at your life. Do you like it? Don't you realize that this system is governed by words? This is a word planet. Your words can create and can destroy. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Don't you know the height of dominion is that you speak and things happen? Kings don't speak and go and make it happen. They speak and it happens. That's why they are called kings. The Bible says, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. When God speaks to you, He does not speak to you as though you have challenges. He just speaks. Moses, go and conquer Jericho. I mean, Moses, go, uh, take the people out of, out of Israel. Joshua, go and conquer Jericho. Do you believe the Lord? Or are you limiting Him with your mindset? Are you allowing the mindset you receive from culture? Many of us get up in the morning and you don't have time to prophesy and speak over your life. You are ashamed of it because of your roommates. Let me tell you something. Tonight, solidify your convictions. Are you listening to me? There is nowhere I will go that I will not be able to... Uh, uh, many of us are not proud of these laws of the spirit because we are not even convinced that they work. Hallelujah. But I choose to operate the law of faith. I choose to live, to embrace the mindset that will make for my victory in this life. Refuse, refuse, refuse to say anything that is not consistent with God's word. Refuse it. Refuse it. You must declare. And you must abide by the principles of God. 10,000 naira comes into your, your hand. The devil is saying this money is small. These koinonia people say, we want to collect our tithe. Keep chopping our money. You will keep getting poor and broke. And a day will come where you will be angry at those who are rich. This is the problem with Nigerians. When things don't work for you, you get sad with those that is working for. When they take light in your house, your last gen is not working. Another person is putting gen that has been running since afternoon and you don't look stupid neighbor with their children. What did they do to you? They didn't offend you. And when a man, you see, let me tell you something. Lack of adherence to the word of God has severe consequences. That I choose to believe the word of God. 
I speak only words of blessings. I speak only words of increase. I speak only words of glory. My path is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. ENI is stepping into greater realms of glory, greater realms of power, greater realms of impact. You must learn to speak like that. Your father looks at you and says, Ah, it has happened. Say, What has happened? Say, They just sacked me. Say, Daddy, I know the Bible says all things work together for good. Relax. God is doing something. He knows how to make a way in the wilderness. Your father will say, Ah, ah, which fellowship do you attend? And then you get ashamed of what you just confessed. You are like, I'm talking too much. I'm here. I'm doing pastor. What is the meaning of that? Yes! The Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God. You must be convinced. You must be convinced. You are reading with your roommates and you are doing it and the thing is not entering. And maybe your roommate is not a very serious person. And then you know that this thing is not entering. The Bible says there is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty maketh men of understanding. And the, the spirit is convicting you. Just close your book and take some. Just stroll around and pray in tongues more. And like, hey God, don't disgrace me now. Eh? The way this guy is already doing as if he likes me. You want to pour sand in my garden now. And you cannot turn. Even when you are praying, you are covering your mouth. Why can't you pray loud? When you are telling people your problems, you tell everybody, you don't whisper it. But when you are praying for the solution, you just know. I know my Redeemer live it. Hmm. The spirit of faith. Do you believe what I'm teaching? Or you're just laughing and enjoying Koinonia tonight? You hear that armed robbers have attacked somebody and they have injured them. They have injured your parents or any of your loved ones. Even when you hear that one of your loved ones is dead, that looks like the end of it. It's better for you to just say, Lord, you are faithful, than to start asking questions that you are not going to get the answer. You just say, faithful God, with tears in your eyes. Hallelujah. I love women. Women have faith. At the height. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean mothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your mother will get up and say, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw that God blessed us. And when she's saying it, everybody's just looking. You know, we men, we are very scientific. Two plus two is not giving eleven. You are calculating this prophecy and it's not adding up. And your mother just says, I know I had a dream. I can't prove it, oh, but it will happen. Hmm. And one day the hand of prophecy will just hold you. And say, remember your mother's prophecy? You are the one who will make it happen. You applied for Unilag, you found yourself in Abu. God is saying, I know where I'm taking you. You are very stubborn, you will not go by yourself. So let's disguise you. And God is bringing you. And then brings you to be receiving this word. Every time you are the word keeps matching up with the prophecies you have been hearing. And every time you know you are getting closer. You know that the miracle will not come from your father or your mother. That you are that deliverer. And the devil will be telling you just forget about all these things. Join them and jump and just go out. But something in your spirit says take this word seriously. It is the seed on which the miracle of your family will thrive. Joseph had a dream. And he knew that the mandate, the deliverance upon his land was, was on his shoulder. Do you realize how great you are? Do you know that the burden of nations is upon you? And God is trusting you. It does not yet appear. You may not look like it. But only God and time can tell how far we are going. This is why I preach and shout on you the way I do. I'm doing it now that I have the opportunity. You see it? I believe the word of God. I am convinced. Are you convinced? Are you persuaded? Enough to speak it. Enough to declare it. Enough to stand and when you submit your project before your lecturer, you just stand back and you're just mumbling tongues and he looks at you and you are not ashamed. They say, what are you doing? He say, well, they call it praying in the spirit. They say, church. 
And then you say, ah, you just shrink back because you're a pretty lady and there are guys there. Embarrassment. What are you ashamed of? The word of God? Or you do not trust that it is able to bring results in your life? Say after me, I believe the word of God. And I refuse to conform. It's the mindset of the kingdom. That you obey God. The Bible says how that Abraham was willing to obey God unto death. Obedience unto death. Hallelujah. They give you a job in Abuja and your salary is 300,000. The moment you are dancing and preparing to go, God will say, no way. There's one teaching job around. It's 20,000. You just go. I'm leading you there. Say, ah, God, I'm not stupid like that. When I was a child, I taught like a child. I, I, I acted like a child. I suffered like a child. Now that I'm a man, no way. Obedience unto death. Now, when you are doing these things, the people around, let me tell you, before the manifestation of your miracle, you always look mad. This is why God told us, is that the spiritual man is not like Abraham. Um, come, you are Isaac in my story now. Abraham gets Isaac and he's just singing. I believe. Hey, I believe. This, it took Abraham a long time. Sarah says, where are you going? Say to a mountain, don't worry. And the servants are just following and discussing. Say, ha, three days journey. Oh, which kind of place are we going? And then he gets to the end of the mountain. And Abraham is rising. He says, okay, Isaac, let's go. And Isaac says, daddy, I see the wood. I see the fire. Ah, I thought we always use ram. Daddy, where's the ram? He said, don't worry, Jehovah Jireh. In his mind, he says, son, this is painful, but you are that ram. <laughs> Obedience unto them and when abraham took I, I don't know how he caught isaac whether he caught him and just put him i don't know how he did it but i know he did it and he carried isaac and placed isaac and tied him while isaac was crying do you no matter how heartless you are at that point something will ring in your heart and god was saying i will not change my mind i'm still watching hmm. He tied Isaac and then he set fire on him. Abraham would have cried fire. Say, what will I go and tell Sarah? Sarah is waiting three days. No GSM then. She would have called and said, oh God, bring my child back and continue your journey. Just bring my child back. Are you listening to me? You do not know that it's, it takes faith and audacity to obey God? Are you listening to me? And he put Isaac. And when he took the knife, the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 that he had already said God was able to bring Isaac back from the dead. So he had concluded. And while he was going to bring it down, God said, my God, I've never seen a man. I mean, Adam, Enoch, they went close, but they didn't hit it. Who is this man? He said, Abraham, I swear in blessing." I will bless you in multiplying. And then we sing, Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. You must do what Abraham did to get what he got. Obedience unto death. Hallelujah. One day you just get up and while you are moving and smiling, your scholarship just enters. You just tell your friends, hey, people, the Lord himself will bless us today. God says, hold on, not too fast. While you are planning for that laptop and all of this, there is a need in this ministry. I want you to go and empty it until you see zero naira in your account. Don't even leave minimum withdrawal amount. Say, God, I know I didn't hear it. Your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. It can be you to bring me a future and an expected end. I rebuke Satan. But the mindset for victory is the mindset that can obey God. How many of you are willing to obey God? If God says tight, tight. Many of you don't pay your tight and you are wondering why the heavens is closed. 
it will remain closed. You are saying the day God blesses me, that day will not come. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. And he took Isaac. Are you listening to me? Great men are men who have done crazy things in life. Upon the fact that they are convinced that the word of God works. Hallelujah. I remember when God told us to go and hold a crusade in massacre. You better hear God before you stand before Pharaoh. Otherwise you will die for nothing. And we went there. And God proved himself in ways that humbled us. Do you not realize that putting up a platform like Koinonia is a risk? There's no assurance that God gives you. That people are going to come, they are going to be blessed and they will remain. Many of you, it's the obedience of God that forced you from 90s to this place. Forced you. While you are going to buy suya, the angel of the Lord said, you are not buying any suya. That's your offering. Let's go. And you didn't want to go. Then God just brought the lady you liked and you started following. You were following. Where is this lady going to? God was saying, shall follow. I'm so desperate for your destiny, you must go. And then when you came, they put you near the front and you came during miracle service. And then you woke up later and saw them wrapping something around you. And from that day, God caught you and said, I've, I've been looking for you since your secondary school. Now I've finally caught you. Say after me, I refuse to conform to the thinking pattern of the world. Say in the name of Jesus. Say one more time, in the name of Jesus. I refuse fear. I refuse defeat. I refuse failure. I refuse sickness. I refuse poverty. I refuse weakness. In the name of Jesus, I experience great grace, great glory, favor, intimacy, increase. Yes, that's how you speak at all times. It becomes your confession. After a while, those that are not born again will start noting some people for speaking in certain ways. And every time you say, ah, I'm looking for prosper. They say, are you part of those people that speak all those things? They, they can laugh at you. Don't stop them from laughing. Because they will soon laugh with you. For they told Sarah she cannot bear a child. She was past age of childbirth. But when Isaac came, everybody came and rejoiced. Do you believe that God is joking with you? Or you are really convinced that his thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil? We are going to pray tonight. The victorious mindset. The mindset that is built upon the... God bless you. The mindset that is built... Lift your Bibles if you came here with your Bible. For those of you who don't respect your Bibles, please change your mindset. Take away that torn Bible that only has New Testament. Go and dedicate the 1,000 naira you want to buy... Um, whatever it is with it and go and buy a good Bible and take it seriously lift your Bibles do you believe that contained in this book is a revelation of God for your life see men who have gone before us they took this word seriously are you listening to me there is no situation you or your family wants to face that somebody has not faced and conquered are you listening to me it's not new but if you can take the word of God and say, I believe, I believe. Lord, I'm convinced. Yes, I'm graduating with a third class. But Lord, I know that your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not. Men have called me a failure, but I believe. Even my father has called me a failure, but I believe. Those of you who want to go for ministry, you are eyeing Lagos. Victoria Island, God said, no, Gusel. Now you have pledged your commitment. God says, Gusel, you had me. I will repeat myself. Pack your wife and your children and go. And now you are going and crying. You get into that land and people say, what do you want to build? You say, a big church. They say, you are a stupid man. It's because there is something wrong. But when you are celebrating your 10 years anniversary and you stand 
and see the faithfulness of God. The things that I see today, God showed me as far back as 2003 and 2004. In my little mind then, I never believed. Never. Never. But God began to bring me to a point where he said, Son, never doubt me. I am more than able. And today, by the grace of God, we are all celebrating the manifestation of what God is doing and how he's building his kingdom. And this is only the beginning. Ah, yeah. You will see things. Jesus said you will see greater things than this. You have not seen anything. Do you value yourself this much to refuse? Refuse it. Somebody is coming and saying he's going to marry you. He's not, he's not born again, but he's very rich. Then there's one brother that has only palms, brown palms, with something like an alligator this thing on top. <laughs> Always coming for koinonia and praying. And every time you are praying, you turn, you just see the person, you say, God, I didn't see him. Oh. I didn't see him. Keep looking at him there. You better hold his heart and puncture it and shift it away. And while you sit down, you are just imagining. How can I leave a rafford for somebody who is moving? But you hear the person, every time you hear them pray, you see him sweating on his own, only one shirt and he's praying. He saying, my life will change. You are hearing it and you are just laughing. And then fast forward five years. You see the manifestation of the glory, the beauty, the splendor. Jesus said, well, you will see the Son of Man in power. You are seeing him in weakness now. A day will come, you will see the Son of Man in power. Would have believed that I'll buy a suit and wear. You people don't know my story, that's why. It's easy to many of you just came and met us with water here and 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 this this glass thing. It wasn't like that. It was Jake's. I will go to their room in Suleiman. They will do beans and sweet potato, and then I'll eat. You think I didn't eat it in your 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 restaurant? 30 naira beans, 20 naira bread, Danish, Danish. Yes. It was 14 naira. The day they increased it to 15 naira, it pained me. Because I felt the difference. So, don't feel bad that you are feeling it now. No. People were there. But I didn't do what you are doing now. That's what helped me to continue. Many of us are there and you are laughing. When you finish, you just say, Tom, Tom, and lie and say, Kai, thou yourself. Their food is not very nice now. Why will you tell lies? Don't you know you are moving forward? Say, I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus. I'm moving forward. My limitations of today are my testimonies of tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, jump up on your feet. Shake up, pata, pata, pata. Come on, prophesy. My limitations of today are my testimonies. I may have nothing, but if I have the word of God, I create my world. I frame my world. I will change my family. We will change Nigeria. Go ahead and prophesy. Walk around and prophesy. Let the spirit of faith rise. I refuse to limit God. God, you call me a world changer. I am a world changer. You call me a champion. I am a champion. You call me a history maker. I am a history maker. Come on, prophesy. You call me prosperous. I am prosperous. You call me healthy. I am healthy. You call me rich. I am rich. You call me a man of faith. I am a man of faith. I refuse to confirm. Make sure you are praying. Shaka patakata balarabasa. Dante boto pasetea. Come on, let our generals pray. Let the generals pray. Let the world change us pray. Mataka posotoya. I am rising from grace to grace. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. By the Spirit of God. No limits. No boundaries. Moving by the hand of God. The grace of God is at work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the time, I refuse to talk like them. I refuse to walk like them. I refuse to call failure, failure. I refuse to call sickness, sickness. I refuse to call delay, delay. Prophesy. If you care 
Amen. Yes, for Koinonia tonight. Prophesy. Walk round. Speak. Let the doors of your destiny be open. I'm the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. The lines have fallen for me. In pleasant places, I have a goodly heritage. The grace of God is at work in me. The world will celebrate His grace upon my life. In the name of Jesus, the doors of nations are opening up to me. I experience increase. I experience breakthrough. I experience the peace of God. Prophesy. 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 In the name of Jesus. Prophesy. God will not fail you. God will not fail you. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy. It's not worthy. It's not worthy to be compared the sufferings in your department, the sufferings in your finances, the sufferings in your health, the sufferings in your ministry is nothing compared with the glory that the word of God is bringing in your life. Hallelujah! I am victorious. I think only victorious thoughts. I have the mindset of a victor. I refuse to conform. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse death. I refuse failure. I refuse poverty. I refuse sickness. I refuse defeat. I refuse to limit God. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. Listen. And you are going to confess. And say, Lord, I take the limits that are placed off you with my mindset. Hear me. There are many of you, God, have told you, you will be presidents of nations. Hold on. You will be CEOs of companies. God has told you, you will build factories. God has said you will build airlines. There are many of you, God told you, you will have mega ministries. God told you the next revival will come through your hands. But you are limiting God. You are limiting God. In every area. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I take off the limits. Go ahead. Do with me what only you can do. Produce a sign and a wonder. My village notwithstanding. My failures notwithstanding. Come on, pray. My challenge is notwithstanding. My family background notwithstanding. Make sure you are praying. I take the limits. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. God is able in me. God is able. I am a champion. I am victorious in the name of Jesus. I am prosperous. I enter my wealthy place. I enter my place of blessings. I enter my place of authority. I flourish in ministry. ENI is growing from grace to grace. We cannot fail. There is a hand upon us. There is the grace of God. That same hand that was there from the beginning. That same hand is still alive. Fearful testimonies of healings, miracles, deliverances. Lives are being changed. Destiny is transformed. Many will come to know the Lord Jesus. Many will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Many will find their place in life. Hey, he will lead you to the place of destiny. He will lead you. I assure you. He will lead you. You will get there. You may be slow, but there is a hand upon your life. Do you not know there is a hand upon your life? Upon your life. In spite of the death that happened in your house, God is faithful. Your father may be dead, 
Your mother may be dead. Your brothers may be dead. God is still faithful. You may be eating just one meal in a day. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Your rent may expire. God is faithful. Haya. Ma popa tikete bata. Rabate kopoto sopekete. Rempari edabash. Ebabasha tabalarabash. Increase in life. Increase in ministry. Breakthrough. My mind is productive. My spirit is receptive. I am a world changer. I am a champion. No limits. No boundaries. I believe the word. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Persuaded. Persuaded, persuaded, firm, immovable. He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word. I don't know about you. He reigns, yes, he reigns. God. Hey. He reigns, 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 he's standing by my side, to bring his word to pass, to bring his word to pass. For the last time, hey, you are standing by my side. Bring his word to pass. can be sure the marriage is coming you will marry the children will come the increase will come yes you will know the Lord the anointing will come on you yes you will walk in the healing anointing yes you will walk in the prosperity anointing the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places you have a goodly heritage where you have been laughed at you become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations your path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus, for your shame, you receive double. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is upon your life. The oil of gladness is upon you. You are rising from one realm of glory to another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A victorious mindset. The mindset of increase. The mindset of grace. The mindset of glory. That you only see things in one direction. God's direction. No swaying. Abraham wavered not. Do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. The world will put pressure on you. Refuse to bend. Refuse it. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the word of God. Let God be true. And every man, every man be a liar. Be immovable. Be unshakable. Be firm. Be resolute. That's the mind of a champion. That's the mind of a world changer. Refuse to dwell on your challenges. Don't meditate on them. 
There's glory ahead. There's glory ahead. There's glory. Your destiny is the land flowing with milk and honey. Where your life becomes a testimony. Where books will be written about your life. Listen to me. Listen. A lot of believers do not know how to triumph in life. Hear me, friends. Every time you ask God to take you to the throne, you will turn and see a Goliath standing before you. The size of your Goliath is how God sees you. Are you listening to me? The size of the Goliath that stands before you. For when you take on the head of Goliath, then you will wear the crown of Saul. Otherwise, you will dream about it, you will fantasize about it, and you will not get there. There are many of you, God is leading you to do things that nobody has ever done. And you are afraid because it's a lonely road. Who told you there is no hand holding you? Who told you? There is a mindset. I want you to live here tonight with a mindset. That you didn't just come to church. And I don't want you to just rejoice and be happy and say, wow, nice. Uh uh. Uh uh. When the business is more serious than that, sweep over your room with a mindset. Write something on the wall that testifies to your convictions. I'm the head and not the tail. Many of you, what you have on your room is that thing you remove when you, when you wrap tissue paper. A carol. Bonjour. Remove that thing and say, I am the head. You may be having probation. Or they may have withdrawn you from your department. Or, see, let me tell you something. What, I don't care what you are in. Let your mind grow wild. You are not the first. And it has produced victorious people. You are not an exception. The difference between those who emerge champions and you is that they did what you are not yet doing. Are you listening to me? So will you turn and call your... Many of you after this meeting or tomorrow you need to call your father and call your mother and tell them, let me tell you something. Don't pack your bags about life yet. There is a deliverer coming. Mm. There is a deliverer. Next time when you speak, stop looking at your ability. Look at God's ability. Your ability in yourself is small. Many of us look at our abilities. That's why we say, uh -uh. If God tells me today that I'm going to plant a church in every city, not country, city of the world, I believe Him. I count Him faithful. Are you listening to me? By this time tomorrow, He said so in the land of Samaria, by this time, and somebody limited God. Every time you limit God, can you see from scripture that he got annoyed? He got really annoyed. By this time tomorrow. And somebody say, ah, ah, even if God will open, hey, hey, don't ever let yourself snare your life with your words. The Bible says, for with your words you are justified, and by your words you are ensnared. Don't ever let that word, is it possible? Ladies, it is possible. the principles of the kingdom. Obey God unto death. When you see the principles of God, many of you need to go and review many of your koinonia jottings. You have notebooks full of jotting. You never follow up. You don't read it. You are chasing after things that the solutions are in the word of God. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. If many of us, hear me, we are rounding up. If many of us would take half the time, hear me, half the time, we spend discussing our issues, discussing our family issues to dig into the word of God. I tell you something, you will come out with something that will make you fear. But many of us don't dwell. You don't believe that God's word is the key, the solution. We only believe it in theory, but we don't believe it in reality. Anything God's word cannot do for you, forget it, it cannot be done. Are you listening to me? Everything your father lays his hands to do is not working. And you are there laughing. 
You are saying he's a wicked man. You see what your words are producing. And he's getting more wicked every day. You are looking at your brother and you are saying he's a stingy idiot in Lagos. Okay. I used to cook for him. And now your words, the Bible says, let it not be said before an angel, I made a mistake. Because angels execute it as you are saying. In the book of Numbers, he said, as I hear you say in my ears, so shall I do. What have you been saying? What have you been saying? Many of you tell yourself, I am nothing. I am nobody. I can't go anywhere. Us, these Jew girls, we are not very fine. See the fine ones. And you are saying, now nobody is talking to you. What have you said about yourself? I'm not saying you should be proud and arrogant and, and look down on others. But you must be confident. Are you listening to me? This is a mindset. It's a victorious mindset. It may look like a simple teaching tonight, but I want you to know that if you do not have this mindset, get set for shock. Because God is faithful. Other people were looking at Goliath, and Saul and his mighty men were crying. David looked at him and said, If I kill this guy, what will you give me? Can you imagine? And they said, We'll give you our wealth, and, and you will get my daughter. He said, you mean it? He said, Lord, I've been praying about marriage. Thank you. The answer has come. He stopped praying. He went and met Goliath. He said, Goliath, you are too small to stop me from marrying. And he won that thing. And do you know as soon as he hit Goliath, he didn't ask for the wealth. He said, where is the lady? So, give me. And he carried her. That was why when David was dancing, she forgot. She had now become a big girl. She said, why are you doing this? He said, I'm dancing before God who took the throne from your father and gave it to me. Engage all the spiritual principles you know. Are you listening to me? The weapons of praise. Don't tell me you have not had messages on it. How many messages do you want to hear before you engage it? Lock yourself. You play a song and you are dancing. Say, Lord, I am dancing in advance for what you will do in my family. You went and saw your result. And people look at you. And somebody is saying, where are you? Sorry, you, Pele. You know I told you. And you lock yourself somewhere and you are dancing. And say, Lord, one day I will build a, a, a theater for this department. And I will make the lecturer who is insulting me to be the one to cut the scissors. To cut uh, the ribbon. What do you believe about yourself? Even Jesus Christ looked at them. He said, before your father Abraham, I am. He never apologized for that statement till he left to heaven. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. If there are two people who will be prosperous in Nigeria, it's me and somebody. I am sure of that. This is not just confession. It is a present day reality in my spirit. I'll never fail in ministry. Never. You know why? Because there is a hand. The hands that lifted me will uphold me till the end. I will not be afraid. The hands that lifted us will uphold us till the end. I will not be afraid. There is a hand that gave you admission. Can that hand not bring you to march out of Contagora Square? There is a hand that lifted you. It will uphold you to the end. I prophesy to you. You will not be afraid. The Lord is your light. He's the light of your life. You should not be afraid. Every time you are afraid, remember the hand that lifted you will uphold you to the end. Again, you will not be afraid. The hand that lifted you from Lagos and brought you to Zaria, the hand that gave you the shop, the hand that brought the first three people in your ministry. The hand that brought the first sick body that you healed. Be confident in that hand. Sing it one more time. 
the hand that lifted me will uphold me till the end I will not I will not be the hand that held your father the hand that lifted him will uphold him till the end Before your father was sent out of the bank they were screened and he got the job where is that hand can he not bring him again can that hand can that hand not bring you again the hand that prospered you in the small shop now you are afraid because God wants to increase you was it not the hand of God the hand that brought you in 100 level you are crying for project remember that cause you thought you would get F then you saw see the hand that lifted you will not hold you to the end I will not be see that's why when I preach the word of God I preach it with fire and I preach it with power hallelujah I'm not one of those user friendly preachers that try to just polish the word of God so you don't hurt the emotion. Ah. Say, Josh, if you don't stop shouting at me like that, I will leave. Do you know how many people shouted in the Bible? Go and read how many times Jesus shouted. When there is a point to stress the way you, you pin it down. He said, but I will go. When you came for here and I, did you not meet people? Were you the first person? There is the hand that lifted us. It will uphold us in the end. We will not be Oh Lord, how will my life continue? I used to take scholarship. Now I'm rounding up. Ha ha. Do you not realize the hundreds of thousands that applied the scholarship? Now you got it. When the raven came and was feeding him, he forgot that a hand brought the raven. Now when the water dried, he began to doubt God. God said, are you doubting me? Come on. Come on. I am El Shaddai. There are many ways I can do the same thing. I'm not stranded of ideas. The hand that lifted us will uphold us to the end. Hallelujah. How will I graduate? Have you not heard that there are policies that have been changed in this school for only one session and was reversed back. Have you not had stories? Will I get admission? Have you not heard of people who got admission with 198? Josh, let's be, let's, let's be sensible. I refuse. That's what I just stopped you from doing. I refuse. I believe God's word. Call me a fanatic. You are not wrong. That's exactly what I am. I believe God's word. Meet me any day. I believe God's word. I believe God's word. You don't come and talk the language of defeat around me. No. Create a protocol around your life. Let nobody just jump into your life and speak every kind of thing. You come and stay close to me and you speak a vulgar language. I politely tell you, uh uh-uh. There is a gate that stands between you and me I'm going somewhere are you listening to me let's hold hands together as we round up there is no one who is not unaware of what is happening in this country listen to me right now people live in fear uncertainties our hearts go for those whose families were lost and it is it's a very sad thing we truly truly sympathize if your family belongs to one of those families our heart goes out to you and we are really praying for you and standing by you but I want to tell you something listen it should not stop you from remaining steadfast in the word of God are you listening to me 
Don't come to a point where you are ashamed. I know you are seeing many graduates running around looking for a job. You are already scared. Begging everybody, trying to find everybody. No. No. The world is getting wicked by the day. Someone was talking, I think it was Jake that was talking to me about a particular bank that was interviewing staff. And the last series of tests they said they should have. I said, this is wickedness. This is wickedness. Realize you can never be stranded in life. He said, I've got Josh, I'm stranded. Don't you understand our language in the kingdom? We have the same spirit of faith. We call the things into being that be not. And it is. This has been my testimony. And I want it to be your own. And that of your family. That tomorrow you can stand before your congregation. Your own church. Your own children. And tell them and say, guys. When we were young. We were taught to hold on to the word of God. And we did. And today, God has not failed. David said, since I was small. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous begging for bread. How many righteous people are begging every day? And the psalmist is talking as if he didn't see it. Say, I've never seen the righteous beg. Didn't he go and beg for bread in the temple? Didn't he ask the priest to give him bread? But he said, since I was small, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. As a family of faith, I bring you a word of prophecy. The condition for you to fail in life is if the resurrection of Jesus Christ can be reversed. You are going farther than you know. You represent a nation. I tell you something. God told me I will raise and I will train choice souls. He told me this years ago. So every one of you standing here represents territories and systems. Some of you the aviation sector. Some of you the media. Some of you arts and entertainment. Like an infant of fire the Lord is launching you. And I tell you something. Refuse. Refuse. To conform. Don't bend. Obey the Lord. Keep tithing. Keep praying. Keep developing yourself. Keep reading the books. Keep building capacity. Bless those who persecute you. Speak good of every man. Manifest the character of the kingdom. Even in pain, give glory. Never ask God why. You will not be strong that way. And then, you will see that the doors of greatness will be opened up to you. And you will walk in it gallantly. And you will lead nations into that door. He said, indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed I believe in my life and I believe in your life and now that God is giving you an opportunity listen a day will come you may not have the opportunity to hear this word because you will now be the leader who will be speaking it to others so now that you have the opportunity to be ministered to listen the Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word was cast blessed be the name of the Lord Father we thank you Thank you tonight for challenging us. We refuse to conform to the thinking pattern of the world. We refuse to let the things we watch, the things we read about, the things we see and hear, distract us from the reality of your word. Lord, we make commitments tonight that your word becomes final authority in our lives. That in life and death we live by your word. Manifesting the fruits of faith and of the operation of the spirit. Lord, we know that your word will not fail. There is a joy that is coming. And our families, our nation, our departments, our faculties, our workplaces will celebrate your hand in our lives. Hallelujah. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're worshiping here with us for the first time, I'd like you very quickly, please leave your seats and run out quickly. If this is your first time, please appreciate them, everyone. Let's clap hands to honor them. If this is your first time, we appreciate you. Thank you, Mark. I see.
have been blessed by this message. For additional information, call 081-38-325463 or 0033-508735 or 0034-003936. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore KNI You can also download our messages on www.forshares.com Eternity Network International duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth